discover how laser weapons are revolutionizing modern warfare as we know it. From their unparalleled precision to their lightning-fast speed, these futuristic weapons are reshaping the battlefield. Join us as we delve into the cutting-edge technology behind laser weapons and explore how they are changing the face of warfare forever. Don't miss out on this eye-opening look at the future of military technology. Be sure to subscribe for more insightful content on the latest advancements in technology and warfare. The world's major military powers are engaged in a new and costly arms race which has already yielded its first concrete results in the area of laser weapons. But what exactly are laser weapons? How did they come about? How do they work? Why are they considered to have the potential to alter the course of war, and ultimately the world? You're about to find out. In simplified terms, a laser is a device that emits light through an optical amplification process based on the stimulated emission of electromagnetic radiation. The term laser is actually an acronym for light amplification by the stimulated emission of radiation. In current terminology, especially in the military realm. The predominant expression is not laser weapon, but directed energy weapons, DEW. Although I personally prefer using the word laser for clarity, the more correct and official term is directed energy weapons. A laser or directed energy weapon produces an intensely concentrated beam of light that with the appropriate power has the capability to alter, burn, or even destroy tissues or materials, depending on what it is targeting and its power. To better understand the origin of lasers, let's go back to 1915 when Albert Einstein laid the theoretical foundations of this technology based on Max Planck's law of radiation. However, it took several decades before the concept materialized. The history of the laser is marked by contributions from eminent scientists who worked on developing the first laser. The authorship of the first laser is a matter of much debate, with figures like Theodore Maiman, Arthur Leonard Shallow, and Charles H. Towns among the candidates for this recognition. Nevertheless, by 1960, the laser had transitioned from a theoretical concept to a tangible reality. The Soviets made significant advancements, creating systems like the 1K-11 and the 1K-17 tanks equipped with laser weapons capable of destroying enemy helicopters and combat vehicles with directed energy. During the following two decades, laser technology saw major advancements, but not in the military field. Rather, in commercial, industrial, and production sectors, with the automotive and manufacturing industries being the primary beneficiaries. However, recent conflicts such as the wars in the Middle East, the conflict between Palestine and Israel, the conflict between China and Taiwan, and the current war between Russia and Ukraine have rekindled interest in laser weapons, now known as directed energy weapons. This interest is not due to the difficulty of detecting or destroying these drones, but due to the lack of a cost-effective solution to intercept them. Imagine using missiles costing hundreds of thousands or sometimes millions of dollars to combat drones that cost a few thousand dollars. It's not sustainable. How can a laser destroy a drone? This is achieved through a process that starts with locating and tracking the target, often assisted by artificial intelligence, which calculates in milliseconds the trajectory and the most effective response. How much does it cost to do this? Probably less than $10 per shot. That's right, less than $10. But that's not the only advantage of directed energy weapons. These weapons operate with a power source, which can be generators or batteries, meaning they don't require ammunition. This not only lowers costs, but also reduces the need for resupply, the risk of running out of ammunition in the middle of combat, and even the collateral risks associated with handling ammunition or explosives. These weapons stand out for their exceptional precision and versatility. By emitting a narrow, concentrated beam of light, they significantly minimize the risk of errors and reduce collateral damage compared to conventional armaments like missiles. The rapid response capability of directed energy weapons is another of their strong points. Against multiple threats, they can quickly adjust their aim or, in some cases, emit multiple beams simultaneously, providing an immediate and effective response against the enemy. However, as with any human innovation, laser weapons face challenges and limitations. Although they are currently in an early stage of development, with the right investments in research and industry, it is very likely they will overcome these obstacles, just as drones did. Some specialists have also expressed concerns regarding the high costs of developing, acquiring, and deploying these systems, in addition to the expenses of training and specializing the personnel who will use them. The primary challenge faced by directed energy weapons is atmospheric thermal dispersion, a phenomenon that can reduce the effectiveness of the laser by causing its energy to disperse in the air especially under adverse conditions such as fog, dust, smoke, or precipitation. Current directed energy weapons programs are working to mitigate this effect and have made significant advances in reducing thermal dispersion. The current laser arms race has three main objectives and reasons for being. The first is to combat the immediate problem of small and cheap attack drones, such as FPV drones or loitering munitions. 
The second is the use of these weapons to intercept and destroy cruise missiles and hypersonic missiles. The third, even more ambitious and probably more time-consuming, is to be used to attack or blind enemy satellites. In recent years, there has been a proliferation of directed energy weapons of various sizes and purposes, some already deployed on the battlefield and others in prototype and testing phases, with even more in development. The United States leads investment in this sector, allocating approximately $1 billion annually to laser weapons projects in collaboration with leading companies such as Raytheon, Lockheed Martin, and Northrop Grumman. Raytheon has developed for the U.S. Air Force the hell of 15 to 50 KW, a high-energy system combined with artificial intelligence to destroy all kinds of enemy devices, even those moving at supersonic speeds like missiles. Northrop Grumman also achieved something impressive in 2022 by mounting its first laser weapon on a U.S. heavy cruiser, specifically the USS Portland. The 150 KW LWSD is mounted on the Portland superstructure and integrated with the ship's combat information center, where a control console is installed. During deployment on the USS Portland, the LWSD was operated and maintained entirely by sailors, without company employees on board to support the system, marking a new evolution in these weapons. Simultaneously, Lockheed Martin is not lagging behind. They designed the AINA or Helio system, a prototype laser system for smaller threats being tested by the US Navy destroyer USS Harley Burke. However, the most revolutionary US system is Diamos, also from Lockheed Martin. This is a 50kW weapon capable of shooting down everything from unmanned aerial vehicles to rockets, artillery, and small boats with a multispectral targeting system that promises unparalleled effectiveness while minimizing thermal dispersion, which is crucial. Russia is not lagging behind with significant achievements like the Parasvet anti-satellite system, capable of interfering with or destroying reconnaissance satellites at a distance of 10,000 km, using a less dense beam to extend its range and dazzle sensitive satellite equipment. On December 1, 2019, Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu announced the deployment of Peresvet with five strategic missile force divisions. In addition to Russia and the United States, countries like Germany, India, Israel, Iran, France, and China are significantly investing in the development of directed energy weapons. Israel has already unveiled its own laser defense system called Iron Beam. This was successfully tested in the southern desert of Israel and has demonstrated the capability to eliminate hostile targets such as rockets, drones, and anti-tank missiles with a range of up to 7 kmia. India is also heavily investing in the development of laser-directed energy weapons. The Indian Defense Research and Development Organization has several programs underway, but the most interesting is the Durga-2, directionally unrestricted ray gun array. This is a 100 kW laser weapon designed to be used against various targets such as drones, missiles, and aircraft. The weapon will be tested in mid to late 2024. China, with its growing military ambitions, is also actively participating in this arms race. Although the available information on its laser program is more limited than that of other countries, US sources indicate that the Chinese program is not very advanced. Recently, Chinese military experts claim to have made a huge breakthrough in directed energy weapon technology, developing a new cooling mechanism that will allow their lasers to operate indefinitely with high energy. This likely relates to 2023 satellite images from US company Black Sky, which showed two laser gimbals mounted in hangars at a secret Chinese facility in western Xinjiang. These facilities are believed to be used for developing and testing anti-satellite weapons. Additionally, since 2018, Chinese researchers have created a prototype laser assault rifle of similar dimensions to an AK-47. One of the most common questions when discussing laser weapons is when they will take the place of traditional armaments. This will probably never happen, or at least not in the near future. Laser technology is designed to complement existing weapon platforms, not replace them. For example, when discussing air defense, it is about a layered shield where various systems work together to intercept possible threats. The laser would become a new layer of air defense. But in most cases, it cannot replace the long range and effectiveness of some modern missiles. That's all. If you want to support the channel, consider purchasing a membership. You can see the available options by clicking the button that says Join, located just below this video. Your support is entirely optional, but I greatly appreciate it.